Our next presenter, our very special guest, Melissa Odin. Melissa is a survivor of a failed saline infusion abortion in 1977. Despite the initial concerns regarding Melissa's future after surviving the attempt to end her life and being born alive at approximately seven months gestation, she has not only survived, but she has thrived. With a master's degree in social work, she has worked in the fields of substance abuse, mental health, domestic violence, sexual assault, counseling, and child welfare. Melissa and her husband Ryan have a daughter, Olivia, whose birth at the same hospital where Melissa's life was supposed to end has significantly shaped Melissa's ministry. Melissa has been featured on television and radio programs including The 700 Club, EWTN, Life on the Rock, Defending Life, Fox News, and many others. Her life and ministry is featured in the award-winning pro-life documentary A Voice for Life. After years of searching for her biological family and offering them forgiveness for the decision that was made to end her life, Melissa's story is so much more than one of survival. Melissa's story is one about the beauty of God's grace in our lives, about the power of love, about the hope for joy and healing in the midst of grief and loss and about the transformational power of forgiveness in answering God's call for your life. Fulfilling the purpose that she believes God set out for her when he saved her from the certain death of the abortion attempt, Melissa is truly a voice for the voiceless. So I present to you now, abortion survivor, Melissa Odin. say when when I start to be introduced I see the eyes start to turn a little bit towards me and people start to go she looks kind of familiar that's okay I get that a lot and the truth is I know one of the things that most people are thinking when they turn and look at me is whoa I never expected that right it's okay I get that a lot but that also speaks to the power of God's grace in my life and, you know, many people probably don't know this, but the reason why I'm here today is not only to honor the children who lost their lives here and honor all of you who, who played a part in making sure that this clinic is closed today, but I'm also here because a few years back I got to know Dr. Monica Miller's work. And when I saw how children who had been left behind after being aborted at clinics when I saw how much Dr. Miller and everyone with Citizens for a Pro-Life Society paid them respects, it meant the world to me. Because in a world that doesn't want to acknowledge lives like mine and the lives of the children who lost their lives here at the American Family Planning Clinic, I will tell you that it means the world to me to know that all of you care. So, Thank you for that. And so many people have said such powerful things already, and I don't know if any of you saw me a little bit ago, but I had my hand up against the wall of this clinic. And I prayed the same prayers that all of you have been praying over the last two decades. Not only that this clinic closes and that the evil is ended, but I prayed for the repose of those children's souls. And I prayed that they know how much they are loved and how everyone here wants for them. No matter what the outcome was inside that building, those children were deeply loved. And so, of course, I stand here in front of you, an incredibly humble woman. You know, Dr. Monica, Miller used the word bittersweet to describe what it's like to be here. That is so true. But for me, the, the word that the Lord kept giving me in preparation for day, today was humble. I am humbled to be standing here in front of a building where thousands of children suffered a fate far worse than what I did. 
by surviving a failed abortion. I stand here humble because I'm standing with all of you whose prayers made a dramatic difference in the lives of children. Whether those children were able to survive like me or they perished, the truth is your prayers made a dramatic impact in the lives of women and their children, many of whom you will never meet on this earth, but you will someday see in heaven. And I am humbled to be with organizations like Citizens for a Pro-Life Society and Guadalupe Partners who are doing amazing things to make a dramatic difference in the lives of women and children and families and ultimately your community. And I am humbled because I should have suffered the same fate that thousands of children did here at this clinic. Because almost 36 years ago, my biological mother was much like the women who came to this clinic. My biological mother fits most statistics when it comes to abortion. She was 19 years old. She was a college student. And sadly, like so many women who came to this very clinic, what I know now is that my biological mother was not given any other choice than to abort me. And I'm not just talking about coercion, which is what I understood for years. I had thought that my biological mother had been coerced to abort me. What I know now is that she was literally forced by her own mother, my grandmother, who was a prominent nurse in the community. Apparently, the abortionist owed my grandmother a favor. And what that led to was an abortion forced upon my birth mother, done in secret at a hospital. For those of you who aren't aware of the saline infusion abortion that I survived, I'll tell you a little bit about it. It involved injecting a toxic salt solution into the amniotic fluid surrounding me in the womb. The intent of that toxic salt solution was to scald me to death from the outside in. If you look it up on the internet after you leave here today, you can read about how children like me are actually called the red skin or candy apple babies because it turns the skin bright red as it peels it away and moves internally into the organs. My birth mother's abortion should have lasted about 72 hours, but for some unknown reason, I soaked in that toxic salt solution for five days. And as horrific as it is for me to think about what it was like for me to fight for my life in the womb, it is equally horrific for me to think about what it must have been like for my biological mother over those five days. It was not her choice to abort me. My biological parents had dated for four years and were madly in love with one another. They would have married. They would have parented me. I had family members who offered to have my biological mother live with them. But there was no other choice. And so she was left to wait over those five days after that toxic salt solution was delivered. And I have no doubt she likely felt me fighting for my life inside her womb because I have met too many women like my biological mother who felt just that before their children ultimately lost their lives. But after those five days of soaking in that toxic salt solution were completed, I was delivered at St. Luke's Hospital in Sioux City, Iowa, in secret, as I know now. And certainly they initially believed the abortion had succeeded in ending my life. Certainly it should have. But what I know now is that although they initially left me for dead there at the hospital to be disposed of like, thousands of children here at this clinic. Even though they left me for dead, God had other plans that day on August 29th of 1977. Yeah. And it's okay folks, I usually don't cry this much. This is just a very emotional time for me. But God had other plans that day because by his amazing grace, as I was left for dead at St. Luke's Hospital, there was a nurse who heard the weak grunting noises emanating from my body. And that's when the secret of the abortion was uncovered and the child 
who lived. You know, as I said when I first came up here, I know if you passed me on the street and you never saw me on television and never saw my face in a flyer, you would never guess in a million years that I suffered what I did in the womb. You would never know by looking at me today that I fought for my life even after I survived. Even though my biological mother thought she was less than five months pregnant when that abortion was forced upon her, the fact that I was able to live and I weighed a little less than three pounds, I was two pounds, 14 ounces when I survived, pointed to the fact she was much further along in her pregnancy than anybody had imagined. And when I actually obtained my medical records in 2007 that clearly detailed the abortion that I survived, and you can see them on my website, Melissa Oden, O H D E N dot com. I put them there to show the world the truth about abortion. Through those medical records, one of the first notations by a doctor was that I looked like I was about 31 weeks gestation when I survived. How many children have suffered a fate? much like mine, but with a different outcome. I know you would never know by looking at me today that the doctors made two things very clear about my life from early on. First of all, there is no medical reason why someone like me survives an abortion. I'm okay with that. And the second thing they made very clear is that they didn't believe I was going to continue to live for very long after I survived. And if I did, I was going to suffer from multiple disabilities, ranging from being blind and deaf to having emotional and mental disabilities. Because when I first survived, I had severe respiratory and liver problems. I suffered from seizures for an extended period of time. I was too weak to suck from a bottle, and so my head was shaved from temple to temple, and I was fed intravenously for a period of time. I required multiple blood transfusions. And the prognosis for my life, of course, was very poor. And I know we live in a world that wants to say that only certain lives are worth living, and only certain lives are worth loving. But I will tell you that my adoptive parents didn't hesitate for a second to open their hearts in their home to me when they got the phone call about the little girl who had survived a failed abortion and was fighting for her life. If you are ever blessed to hear interviews that my parents do from time to time, you will hear them tell the story of how the first time they laid eyes on me, lying in the incubator full of tubes and wires, the first time they laid eyes on me, they fell in love with me. And I wasn't a pretty baby. It's okay. The pictures are out there. Everybody sees them. But my parents saw God's inherent beauty in me. And my mother always tells us the story of how the first time she held me in the palm of her hand, because that's where I fit at the time, she knew I was going to be okay. They loved me. They believed in me. And I know it was their love and belief in me that healed me to the point that I went home to them just three months after I survived that failed abortion. But it wasn't just their love that healed me. It was the love of the medical professionals, many of whom I have blessed to know in my own life now personally. I call that loving someone into life. And we've seen it here today through the work of people who witnessed and counseled here. Children and women and families were loved into life. And I deeply appreciate that. And I know you do too. Amen. It is a blessing. And so that's a little bit about my survival and how I came into the world. And trust me, folks, if you wanted to hear the whole story of my survival, I could be up here for hours because the little piece about what I survived is the smallest part of my life. Because God has continued to bless me and show me the impact of abortion in my life and all of our lives. And the truth is, I'm here today to give a voice and a face to thousands of children who lost their lives at this clinic. And I'll be real honest, I spent years of my life thinking, who am I, Lord? that you have given me this purpose. I'm not prepared to do this. I'm being a voice for tens of millions of other children. And I felt guilty. Guilty that other children weren't given the same opportunity. But I can tell you that I'm standing here today to show the world that this is what thousands of children who lost their lives at this clinic would have looked like in some way, shape, or form if only they would have lived. And this is what their voice would have sounded like. And this is how they would have chosen to live their lives. Full of joy, 
with purpose, with meaning. And as hard as it is for us to think about the lives that were lost here and what it's like to live in a culture of death, what we're also here to do today is to celebrate. To celebrate the fact that no more lives will be lost in this clinic. And that is by the grace of God and that is by the efforts of each and every one of you who have been willing to say, yes, Lord, Yes, Lord, I will do what you are calling me to do, even when it makes me feel uncomfortable, even when I feel totally unprepared. I will do whatever it takes to make a difference in someone's life and ultimately in our world. And certainly we know that you've made a difference. You have living testament of it today. But have you thought for a second about the legacy that you are leaving by the work that you have done? Not only did you save one life, two lives, countless other lives, but you have saved future generations to come by your witness, by your prayers, by your counseling. And because this clinic is now closed, future generations will survive and will thrive in your community, just like I've been blessed to do that very thing. That is an amazing legacy indeed. And I say legacy because I am blessed now to be a mother myself. Amen. Our little girl is five years old. Amen. And you know what she said to me the other day? She said, you know, Mom, if that abortion would have killed you like it was supposed to, I wouldn't be here. I never would be going to kindergarten this year. I never would have been hugged by my dad. I never would have been able to eat pizza. <laughs> Think about that for a second. How many lives have been forever lost because of abortion? Not just 55 million in 40 years like we know, but we have literally lost hundreds of thousands of lives because of abortion and hundreds of thousands, hundreds of millions of lives have been forever changed. Lives like my own family. And I know many of you know bits and pieces of my story. And some of you may know that I went looking for my family for many years. I was blessed to find them back in 2007 and offered them forgiveness for the decision that was made to end my life. The short version of that story is that my birth father died before he ever responded to the letter that I sent him. We were actually living in the very same city, and I never had the opportunity to meet him. But through his passing, he gave me the gift of his family, some of whom I now have a relationship with. And people literally all across the globe have been praying for my biological mother and her family over the years that someday I would get to meet my biological mother. And I have faith in God knowing that if it was going to happen, it was going to happen in his way and in his time. And I'll be real honest, I was left thinking, it's probably never going to happen. And then two months ago, the email came. It was a cousin from my biological mother's side of the family. Not only have I been blessed to get to know this cousin, but I've now been able to pass along messages back and forth to my biological mother who now knows the truth about the abortion nearly 36 years ago, who knows that her daughter survived, is so incredibly grateful for the gift of life and that she is loved and forgiven. What a great opportunity it is. And I know that prayers have been answered. People like you have been praying for my biological mother for so many years, and now I can see the fruits of those prayers. There will be a meeting someday but until then, what's most important to me is that she knows that she is loved. And so we are here today not only to pay our respects to the thousands of children like me who have lost their lives in this clinic, we are, we are also here to honor their mothers and their fathers, their grandparents, their aunts and uncles, their cousins and their siblings, who have all been forever changed by what happened at this clinic. And so even though we mourn the loss of those who lost their lives, 
I hope we can take from today knowing that this can happen in other places too. Clinics can and will be closed, and because of that, lives, future generations will be saved, and ultimately families will be saved and healed right here in your community. So thank you so much for all that you have done to make today possible. And on behalf of tens of millions of children who will never have the opportunity on this earth to say thank you. I thank you on their behalf. Thank you.